Hey guys, and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed, and in this video, we're going to be designing a basic two-up call-out component. So let's get started. So this is the section that we're going to be designing in this video. We have our main section frame. Inside this main section frame, we have a reusable header component that we created in a previous video. We have this image wrapper frame, which contains a animated GIF inside of it. We have this callout frame, and inside that callout frame, we have a callout wrapper frame with auto layout applied to it and constraints top and center applied. So this 24 pixel padding is always going to be maintained, even if I were to resize my description. Inside our callout wrapper frame, we have this callout description frame, which contains two text elements with eight pixel padding between them. And this frame has auto layout applied to it so that this eight pixel padding is always maintained. So in this video, we're going to be designing this new callout component, and we're going to be creating a new tertiary button. So let's start building this out. So I'm gonna go back to our main desktop frame where we had created these components in previous videos. And I'm going to start by creating my main section frame. So I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard to add a frame. I'm gonna have that be the same width as my desktop frame and align it to the bottom of my slider. I'm gonna rename my frame to section callouts. And then I'm going to toggle my columns on by hitting control G. Inside my main section callouts frame, I'm going to add a reusable component, the section header that we created in a previous video. So I'm gonna drag and drop it in, align it to the center, and I want it to be at 104 from the top of the frame. That's 104. I'm also going to change the alignment of my text elements. So I'm gonna select them both by holding Option and Shift down. And then I'm going to go to text alignment and have them aligned to the center. I'm also going to delete some of my header text. So I'm gonna maybe bring that down to just these three. And then underneath my header frame, I'm going to start creating my callout. So I'm gonna have a frame that spans six columns with an animated GIF inside of it. And next to that frame, I'm gonna have another frame that spans six columns, and that's going to be our callout description. So I'm gonna start by adding my animated GIFs. So I'm just gonna go and drag and drop them in. And I'll post these GIFs to the description of this video. I'm gonna drop them in. Great. I'm gonna start with this one. And I want it to span six columns. So bring that down. I'm holding shift down while I'm resizing to maintain the same aspect ratio. Let's see. One, two, three, that's six columns. And then I'm gonna hit Option Command G to put it inside of a frame. I'm gonna call this frame Image Wrapper. I'm also going to set my, the constraints of my GIF to center center, so it's always at the center of the frame. Let's see how that looks. Looks good. I have this weird gray line that appears with this GIF. So I'm just gonna hold Command down while I'm resizing this frame. And I'm gonna hit Clip Content so I don't see this gray line anymore. And now let's just bring that to the right one. Now it should be at six. Six, great. Now let's just bring up our frame a bit. Let's have it be at, let's say, 64 from the header. I also think I want to change the color of this header. So I'm going to have it take on the shared navy style that we created previously. So I'm going to select them both and go and select my navy shared style. I actually think I'm not going to have this description be the navy shared. So I'm going to detach that and give it a, maybe a 50% opacity so that there's a little contrast between the header and description. And now I'm going to start creating my callout description. So I'm gonna hit Control G again to toggle my columns, and I'll start by adding my text elements. So next to my image wrapper frame, I'm gonna add a text element. I wanna span maybe four columns. I'm gonna say this is a header. Let's have it span four columns. going to detach this paragraph style, give it auto height so that my width is always fixed, but my height is responsive according to the text inside my text element. I'm going to have it be left aligned and maybe give it a H3 shared style. Let's see how that looks. Now, I think I actually want a bigger header. So I'm going to detach this H3 and I'm going to create a new shared style. 
So let's give it a larger text size, maybe a regular font weight. So because our H3 is smaller than 24, I'm actually gonna change that to be our H4. And then I'm going to create this shared style into an H3. So click the shared dots, plus new shared style, H3. And let's just rearrange it. Perfect. So now let's give this our Navy shared style. Gonna duplicate this by holding option down and dragging to the desired space. Let's have it be at eight. And this will take on a paragraph style. I'm just gonna go grab some dummy text from blindtextgenerator.com and I'll post a link to the description of this video. Let's just grab two lines, copy, paste into our text element. And let's do the same like we did for this um, description. Let's just detach the shared style and give it a 50% opacity. Now let's just place them both inside of a frame. So option command G, I'm gonna call this frame call out description. And I'm going to apply auto layout to this frame so that my eight is always maintained. So if I were to change my header, it would be responsive. Now let's just create our tertiary button. So underneath my callout description, I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to add a new text element. Say learn more. I'm going to go to my system symbols. This is the quickest, quickest way to do this. Search for an arrow. We use this one, that was good, sure. Then let's just detach this H3, give it auto width. And let's give it a paragraph shared style. And we're also going to change our fill. We're going to give it a blue, our primary blue shared style. Touch this auto width and paragraph shared style. Perfect. So now let's just bring this up to this padding that we want. So I'm gonna go with 24. And then I'm gonna place them both inside of a frame. Option Command G. We call this call out wrapper. I'm going to apply auto layout to this frame. Detected that 24. So now if I were to change my paragraph text, it should push my button down. Now everything's responsive. Great. So now let's just place our call out inside of the frame so that it spans six columns. So option command G. I'm going to call this frame call out. I'm going to have it span six columns. I want it to be the same height as my image wrapper. So we're gonna bring it up and down. Here we go, now it's the same height. And now let's just center the call out wrapper frame. So center, center, and let's change our constraints also to center and top so that it always pushes the content down if you were to change it. If it were center, center, the content would grow equally both ways. So if we change the center, center, and you change the text now, it's going to push it up and down. And we want it to always be fixed at the top. So that's why it's center and top. So now all that's left is to create a new reusable component for our button and this call out. So I'm gonna grab my button. I'm gonna click Command X. And then I'm going to go to my atomic elements next to my primary button. I'm going to paste it. Paste it next to my primary button. And then I'm gonna call, put it inside of the frame, option command G. Call this frame button, tertiary. Tertiary. I think that's how we spell it. I'm also going to rename my button component here. I'm going to have this button also be button and primary. Now let's create this into a component. Create component. And by putting these slashes right after the button, you're, you're placing both frames or both primary and tertiary buttons in the same group. So if you go to your assets tab, you'll see that both buttons are now in this buttons tab. So you can easily select them. So I'm gonna go back to my main desktop frame and then underneath my callout description, I'm going to grab my button. So drag the 
buttons, drag and drop your opponent in. Should be there. Perfect. We have that 24, amazing. So now all that's left is turn this collar frame into a component. So I'm going to cut and paste it into my molecular elements. Maybe put it right here. I'm going to give it a white fill for now. Let's go with our white shared style. And then we'll go to the top and click create component. So now if you go to your assets, molecular elements, you should have, there it is, our call out description. So let's go back to our main desktop frame. And next to my image wrapper, I'm just going to drag and drop our call out. Make sure that's spanning six columns. It's perfectly aligned. Great. We're pretty much done. All we have to do now is just grab our two components. I'm going to hold Option down to duplicate them both. Let's have them be at, let's say, 24 from each other. Well, let's do 32. 34, 1, 2. And then I'm going to go to these purple dots and just switch them so that my call is now on the left. So I'm gonna grab the other GIF, cut it, and paste it inside our image wrapper frame. And then I'm gonna hold shift down and size it down to the same size of the frame. Shift. Make sure that it's center, center aligned. Change that to center, center. We'll delete our other GIF for now. And we're done. That's it. So let's see how this is all looking like. So I'm going to go to the top toolbar and hit present. And here are all the components that we created previously. We have the hero section, we have our slider, and we have our callout section with our animated GIFs. Sweet. So in this video, we created a reusable callout component and we also created a new tertiary button. Make sure to check out the next video where we will be using our callout to create another reusable component. I'll see you there.